The Ratchet & Clank original quadrilogy was hailed as one of the greatest series of games that ever came out on the PlayStation 2. At least I truly believe that. Maybe everybody doesn't, but, you know. Regardless, if you're anything like me, when you, had, when you owned a PS2, you played these games a bunch. Uh, some of you probably even dozens of times. Now, once we complete these games, there's not really a whole lot to do aside from 100% them. Logically speaking, most of us want to get the most out of our games, and so we become completionists. Now, anybody who's ever played Ratchet and Clank 2 can probably tell you there's one particular skill point that is just so annoying. No matter how many ways you do it, no matter how many ways you uh, attempt it, you just can't seem to get it for some reason. Is the game bugged? What is going on here? Of course, a lot of you probably know what I'm already know what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't, I'm talking about Wrench Ninja 2 on Joba. Uh, but thankfully, we of the speedrunning community have actually completely solved this skill point, or at least we believe we've completely solved it. I'm sure we think we have it 100% down until we find some random weird circumstance that completely screws us over on a speedrun. We'll address that when we get there. But for right now, we might actually have this skill point totally solved. And so I want to use my knowledge to help you all in your next casual playthroughs. Let's dive into this. So there's a few things to keep in mind as you're attempting the skill point. Uh, there are some do's and don'ts as far as what is allowed and what isn't allowed. Let's go through them. Number one, you're allowed to kill enemies with a wrench, obviously. Uh, that's a no-brainer. The skill point is called Wrench Ninja 2. It should seem pretty obvious that, uh, you're allowed to use the wrench. But what a lot of people don't know is that you're allowed to use a lot of stuff aside from the wrench. For example, you can kill enemies with nanotech blasts. When your nanotech upgrades, there's a huge explosion that comes directly out of Ratchet and kills every enemy in the area. You are allowed to use that. That is totally okay. Uh, you are allowed to kill enemies, believe it or not, with the turret. The turret is apparently uh, made of wrenches or fires wrenches or I don't know. I don't really understand why it works. Well, actually, I think I do. I have a theory, but I'm going to get into that in a second here. You are allowed to knock enemies off of cliffs. Now, I, original, originally we had a theory that, like, did it not work because I hit an enemy too far down because he knocked off the cliff and I didn't get the experience. No, that's not it at all. Uh, you are allowed to knock enemies off of cliffs. You probably want to stay within the zone of the enemy to see if the nanotech uh, experience, like, you know, you know how it, how it moves up whenever you kill an enemy. You want to see, like, if it goes boop, then, you know, you you probably kill the I, I'm I'm mirrored here. I guess it's more like boop. Uh, but yeah, regardless. Uh, and finally, you can use uh, enemies' friendly fire to hurt each other. Uh, and I think that's probably why they allow the turret is because there's a few enemies that start out within the turrets and if they killed the enemies and avoided the skill point, it would be really, really annoying. Um, so I think they allow friendly fire and they allow turret fire as well for that, for just to make our lives a little bit easier, which is kind of nice of them in a way. Uh, there's only two things that aren't allowed and first off, you are not allowed to fire a weapon ever, 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 ever. Even if it misses, do not fire a weapon. Don't do it. It is, it is a trap. Um, it will immediately kill your chance of uh, getting the skill point because there is a yes-no flag. Uh, it's a binary flag uh, that, that activates the skill point. Did you fire a weapon? If yes, you cannot get the skill point anymore. Uh, even the decoys, I think I have the, do I have the decoys out right now? Well, let's just say I have the decoys out. I couldn't even use the decoys, I, I don't think. I actually don't know, but why risk it, right? We don't need the decoys anyway for what, we're, what I'm about to show you. And a few tips to bear in mind. Number one, you're going to want to do this on your second visit. Do not do this when you initially load Joba, uh, because there's going to be more enemies. Uh, I think there's, if I'm remembering correctly, 47 enemies on a first visit, and I believe 34 on a second visit, a difference of 13 enemies. That's 13 chances for you to die. So you're going to want to do it on a second visit because it's just way easier. Um, secondly, do not grab an Anotech. Oh, I think I also missed the point where, where you're not allowed to miss an enemy, but I think that's pretty obvious. Um, you have to kill all the enemies to get the skill point that says you killed all the enemies. Uh, anyway, you're, you're not going to want to grab the nanotech on your first visit either. So a lot of you probably remember there's a nanotech uh, hidden away in the level. Uh, and you can pick it up pretty much whenever if you can figure it out. But you're going to want to leave it until you're doing the skill point because once again, nanotech blasts kill enemies and it's just going to make our lives a lot easier. Uh, third, if you die while attempting the skill point, do not attempt it again. You want to reload the game first. 
That is a very, very important part because if you die, it, it messes up all of the flags and there's a really big chance that you're just not going to get the skill point even if you do everything correctly, if you just attempt it again. So if you die, just very simply reload the game and it's totally cool. Uh, you can try it again and it should work properly. And finally, there's one enemy that we have to let walk forward. Now, now uh, I'm not going to be able to show this to you until uh, we get to that point, but just bear that in mind. That is probably the biggest killer of this skill point because a lot of people don't know you have to let them walk forward. Now, I'd like to give some massive shout outs before we dive into this to two runners, Clippy, an old school, one of the very first members of the Ratchet and Clank community, did so much early research into this skill point. And the second runner is Mantodia, who took Clippy's research and uh, kind of used it to solve the last little bits. Uh, Manto figured out a lot of very recent stuff that's helped us all out in the speedrunning community. And a lot of this info is stuff that I'm sharing with you right now. Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I don't know what the hell just happened there. Anyway, here I am at the very end of the level. So let's assume that I just played through my very first visit of Joba. I just loaded it for the first time. I just got there after doing the Dabo orbit fight. Uh, and and uh, what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna clear the whole level. And this is the end of the level point. This is the flag that says, okay, you finished everything. Uh, here you go. This is the end of it. Um, so you get to this point and you can save and reload. Now, I'm not going to save because I just need to load this file to be okay. Um, but if you're just getting to this point, you're going to want to make sure you save first. So, so uh, yeah, I'm going to pretend to save. I'm not going to actually save here, but save game, load game. And here we go. We're going to do all this all in one take. I'm going to walk you through each wave of enemies step by step. We're going to do it together. Um, so first and foremost, I'm going to start with the decoy out. And once again, I'm going to show you, you don't have to be afraid of having a weapon out. You just want to make sure you don't shoot that weapon at all. Just don't even bother. It's not worth it. So uh, we land on Joba. I have the decoy out. Oh, no, it's so scary. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to pull out the dynamo. I'm going to pull out the swing shot. And that's all we need. And just so you all are aware of what I'm doing this with. Base armor. I have no protection. I'm going in raw. Uh, I've got the level 2 wrench, which is the weakest wrench you can have at this point. And I only have 11 bars of nanotech. So, if I can do this with this little stuff, you can do this too. Uh, with, with any number of stuff, whether you have a completed file or not. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by charging forward. And remember, you can use friendly fire to hurt these enemies. So, I'm going to wrench these guys a little bit. I'm going to use this laser guy to kill all these guys over here. Just going to make my life easier. This guy won't hit you as long as you're jumping in the air. And I can just wrench swing him once and then hyper strike. All of these enemies here die in one wrench swing and one hyper strike with the level 2 wrench. It's very, very easy uh, to... Well, it's maybe not easy to, to manage that while there's a ton of enemies around. But if it's just you and one person, that's all you got to remember. You don't have to swing the wrench a trillion times. Just one hyper strike, one wrench swing. You can even throw the wrench once and do a hyper strike or, or whatever makes your life the easiest. So, pull out the dynamo. We're going to activate the secret nanotech dynamo right here. We're going to activate this and charge forward immediately. We're going to go right in between those guys and just pick up the nanotech. And I'm going to blow up all those guys over there. One more wrench swing will clear the wave. And that's why we want to leave that nanotech there. Because it makes it so easy to clear wave 2 when you can just grab this and kill you know, 99% of them, and then there's that one dude left. You just wrench swing him once. So we're going to move on. So here we are at wave three. Once again, we can go inside turrets. That's totally okay, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over here, get inside this turret, swing that guy to get him out, and they're all going to walk over here for some reason. I don't know why they lock on over here, but you just fire down the middle here, and you'll pretty much just kill all of them. It's pretty convenient. Uh, and then you're going to break down this door, and then these enemies will just walk forward, and you can just kill them. Did I get that dog? Yeah, I got all three of them. Uh, so yeah, that's wave three. I'm going to collect this nanotech right here. Just to make sure I'm at full health. You want to be as safe as possible. There's tons of nanotech around this area. So you you are fully at liberty to grab as many of them as you need. So uh, here's probably the trickiest wave if you're a casual player and you don't know exactly what to do here. But I'm going to make your life very easy. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to charge down the middle twice here. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to charge once, charge twice, and then hit the guy out of the turret and get inside the turret. Sometimes the green dudes, or the guys who shoot the green lasers, they'll shoot the guy in the turret for you if you're in the right spot. So that's why we're aiming where we are. So let's do it. Let's charge forward once, charge forward twice. 
And look at this. The laser dudes just kill him for me. You get inside the turret. And then for whatever reason, they, they don't aggro you anymore. So they all just walk in a straight line down the middle. And, and you can just kill them all. It, it makes it very simple. Uh, there's two dogs here. You can't forget the two dogs. Uh, and I'm going to aim this turret right here. There are three dudes beyond this door. One of them likes to hide in this corner, like right behind here. And if you aim right here, you can probably kill him before he even uh, he even gets to hide in the corner. And there's going to be one more dude on the left who's going to walk towards me. And the guy in the middle is actually going to shoot him. It's going to be very tragic. Here we go. So we kill that one dude. That dude kills his friend right in front of me. And then we just knock him off a cliff. <laughs> it's kind of sad, actually. dude. <laughs> like that guy. He thinks that dude in the back was so determined to hit me. He just shoots his best friend right in front of me. <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing, honestly. Uh, but hey, you know what? We get it done however we can, right? So I'm going to grab this nanotech over here. If I needed more health, I could grab this nanotech. There's also another nanotech right over here behind this door. There's even two nanotech behind this door over here. So you've got plenty of health you can pick up. Um, so now I'm going to activate the dynamo. Stand on the platform. And because this is a reload, it just takes me straight up. I don't have to do the puzzle again. Uh, and in this next room, my goal, let me tell you my goal, and then I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. My goal is to dodge all these enemies down here and get inside this turret. I had a really weird thing happen when I was doing one take of this where I exited that turret and it warped me all the way to the end of the level. I don't really know why that happened. Um, something about the checkpoints or something. So hopefully that doesn't happen this time. Regardless. That's what I'm going to aim to do, and what's going to happen, you can see my nanotech is nearly upgraded, that, that like, yellow, orange, red bar in the center of the game. Uh, that's nearly all the way complete, and that's going to happen after I kill these three enemies up here, and the nanotech explosion is going to kill all the enemies down here. But even if you don't have a, nano, a convenient nanotech explosion, what you're going to do is you're just going to kill all the enemies up here anyway. And then you're going to kill the enemies down here one by one. You can even do it from a higher elevation. It's like Star Wars. If you have the high ground, you just win. Um, so I'm going to start by charging over here. Double jumping. Or I can just ledge grab. I'm, double, I'm ledge grabbing again. Going to knock this guy out of the turret and usurp his throne. And I'm going to kill him. <laughs> it's kind of tragic. I, I take everything from him and then just murder him. I take his turret. I take his soul. And I take his wife right afterwards. Okay. Uh, very, very important thing right here. So after you kill this guy in the turret, remember how I said, remember the very, very bottom? Let the last enemy walk forward. Now, who is the last enemy? This guy behind this door is the last enemy. Technically speaking, there's going to be more enemies after him, but uh, we're just going to make sure that we kill this guy. Like, this is technically the last dude if you're doing it in a linear way, I suppose, which is why I call him the last guy. What a lot of people don't know is, if you kill this guy while he's too far back, if you try to be too much of a gamer and kill him too quickly, you just don't get the skill point. This is something we learned very, very recently, and the way we found out, Mantodia had to unironically use a debug option in this game to learn that. How he did that, I truly have no idea. He's, he's truly way more of a giga brain than I am. Um, but what I can tell you right now is, we're going to shoot this door down and let this guy walk forward. I'll, if you want to be super safe, let him walk down, walk towards this white line. Um, but I think you can kill him as far back as here uh, and be totally fine. Oh, there's another guy here. How'd you get up here? Oh, the dog is knocking them up or something. That was very strange. Uh, I think the dog kept knocking those dudes in the air and, the, and then the dog killed them for me. Kind of convenient. Just goes to show how powerful the high ground is. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we let this guy walk forward before we kill him. Uh, and then if you don't have a nanotech explosion, what you're going to do is you're going to stand right here and throw your wrench at the dude who shoots lasers. You want to hit him once, and then you want to land on him with the hyper strike. He's the most dangerous dude by far. There's like three other enemies and maybe a dog, maybe two enemies and a dog. But you can just kill them with basic hyper strikes. You want to kill the guy shooting lasers as soon as you can, because he does six nanotech of damage with my current armor. Um, but I'm at full health. And we're going to move on from this wave, and we're going to clear the last wave of enemies. Now, this is the order that we do it in speedrun, which is why I'm doing it this way. Uh, and normally what we do is we just charge forward and do a, a neutral long jump with a wrench. Like, we wrench swing in the neutral long jump all the way over here. But let's assume that, you know, for our purposes, we're just normal, casual gamers. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all. We're just going to charge down here. And we're going to land over here. And, uh... 
A big reason why we like to save this for last, this swing shot node is evil. It's not our friend. You need to be really high up in the air to use it. And I, I've seen so many people in my life just try to double jump to that swing shot node because they thought it'd be super easy to latch onto. And then they fall to their death and look like an idiot. So if you're using the uh, thruster pack, you have a really high double jump. So you should have no problem if you do double jump. But if you're using the helipack, you're just going to do a basic high jump and latch onto the swing shot node. Now, finally, there's one more laser dude back here. We're going to use his lasers to kill these enemies right here. Just makes our life easier. We're going to charge forward, dodge this guy's laser fire, hit him with a wrench swing, and then hyper strike him to kill him. And then one last dog. One, two, three, four. And look at that. The skill point. It just works. It works. If you do this step by step, it should work 100% of the time. Now, if you're uh, in the speed run, what we do is we just open up this door and we grab the the, uh, the platinum bolt as well. I'll even show you the cool movement that we do as a little treat if you made it this far in the video. We grab the platinum bolt. I hope I do this correctly. Um, and then we go out this window and we uh, we line it up. You can line it up. I, I, I tend to free ball it a little bit. You do a, uh, a wrench jump all the way over here. You latch onto this node. You go all the way to the apex of the swing, and then you just glide all the way to the ship with all your charge boot speed. It's super cool, but that's not the point of this video. I just kind of wanted to show you that because I'm excited about it. Um, anyway, hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully this, uh, you know, prevents any massive headaches when you revisit this game later in your life. Or uh, if you're like, oh my god, I can't believe that I didn't let that enemy walk forward far enough. Or like, oh, I can't believe I didn't I didn't know that there were two dogs in that one room. You know, like, hopefully this, this gives you that aha moment that helps you uh, when you're doing this to never struggle with it ever again. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, all that. You can tell me your horror stories with the skill point in the comments if you want. I love reading Ratchet and Clank horror stories. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope this this all instructed you a little bit more. I hope that uh, that you know you enjoyed this video, and uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much for your support. Peace out.